currently this is a one semester course that's compulsory for creative media students, obviously. Um, there are two teachers currently on this course, uh, each teaching three classes, so six total classes, about 25 students in each class. Um, let's see, anything else I can just tell you? Allison, right there, is the other teacher. So I'm one teacher and Allison is the other teacher. Um, just to really quick, we're going to go over the reason that this course was created. It is a new course. It was piloted last semester, and it's being updated this semester, and I'm sure we'll continue to update it as we learn more about the needs of our students. Um, and really quick question for everybody. Does anyone know what ranking Hong Kong has in the World Art Auction? Market. What? One? World art. The best. World art. We are number three. Wow. So the reason that I bring this up is because one of the reasons that we were asked to create this course with the English department. The English department gave us the information and then Alice and I created the course. Was basically that um, we have a really strong development in Hong Kong of becoming a cultural hub. And so the Creative Media School, or School of Creative Media here, uh, wanted to make sure that when our artists graduate, they can speak about their art. Because as you can see here, art is about ideas, it's not about pretty pictures. And the reason that I have chosen this photo of um, Renee Marguerite from 1929 is because this was one of the first pieces of art that actually challenged the concept of what art is. And that's basically what we talk about in the class. <laughs> what is art? And how do you talk about it? So in our course, we're focused on the pre, um, sorry, persuasive, critical, and creative styles of writing and communication. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about our specific assignments for each of those elements. Um, but we're basically looking at writing across the different media platforms and how our students are communicating in that. We're also looking at uh, theories and techniques that guide multimedia composition and allowing students to develop the, the capability to express themselves in both um, written and spoken language about art, but also express themselves visually. Um, so our other course learning outcome is to compose and create and present multimedia text and projects. So we have a great final project that I think most of our students really enjoy for this course. At least I know I enjoy it. Do you enjoy it? <laughs> like the actual <laughs> final compilation of everything. It's really, really cool to see what they come up with. So then we also have the element of reflection. And this comes at the end of the course, and it is just a really simple 500 word essay about their experience working as a group. Because in creative media, most things are done as groups, not necessarily as an individual. So it's looking for what are, um, what are the, the ways of being in a group that they would like to perpetuate in future group work, and what are some of the issues that they kind of came up with, the problems, and how they still solve them. I can't even speak. <laughs> in, in terms of how um, they dealt within the group. So the different units, the first one that we have is persuasive writing, and that runs basically from weeks one through five. And with persuasive writing, our main assignment is a proposal. Also from weeks one through five, we're running critical writing. And that, that continues, as you can see, all the way until week eight. But basically, our assignment is a portfolio. And that's where we come in with this wonderful image again, because it's a it's an example of representation, which is one of the theoretical concepts that we talk about that they need to be able to discuss potentially in their future career. So for the portfolio, we have a biography where they're writing about themselves. Obviously, you can see how that would be relevant to their everyday life. They're going to have to be able to
able to write both a social media biography as well as just a general presentation that you would have on a website on the back of a catalog at an art auction or um, on their, where else? Where else? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. LinkedIn for job exactly. Company website. Company sure. websites as well. Yeah, and we have a wide range of students. So some of our students are going into the film industry. Some of them are going into gaming. So they're creating the video games that you all are playing. <laughs> and some of them are also going into more conceptual art. So it's quite a variety. Um, we have an exhibition review, so it's basically practicing looking at a piece, well, a curated exhibition, and then thinking about what do I know about the artist, what is the artist's philosophy, what is the background knowledge that I can apply to my discussion of this artist's work with the intention that, one, they're reviewing the work themselves, but that they're also thinking critically about connecting the, what they currently know um, in terms of any theory or other artists, et cetera, et cetera, with uh, pieces that either they're producing so that they can talk about their own work in, a context, in the context of a, a canon of work that artists who have come before them have created. So that's more or less what the exhibition review is supposed to do. Um, critical writing, so one of the concepts, for example, if they took this image and they wanted to go further into the discussion of what this piece of art means and how this image has evolved into pop art. I'm sure you've seen possibly this image before that says this is not a pipe. So it is an image of a pipe, but it is not physically a pipe. So what does that mean? <laughs> Um, and this is recreated a lot, it's almost become iconic because of the amount of times it's been recreated so they can have a discussion about that as their critical writing piece or they can do another review. A lot of them like to discuss video games and things like that because that's what they would like to do when they graduate. And then finally, we have a glossary. So this glossary consists of all, it can be terms or it can be words that they didn't know coming into the course. And what they're looking at, or we just kind of wanted them to see all the amazing things that they've learned, as well as have a reference that they can look back at later once they have, I'm almost like graduated from our course. It feels like a graduation at the end of the course. And we've covered so much information. But once they finish our course and move on. So they make their own glossary? Yes, they do. So they can choose words either from any of the readings that we've given them, any of the videos that we've watched in class, um, from our PowerPoints, if they feel so inspired, uh, as long as it's related to art in some way. <laughs> okay, and then our last wonderful unit is the creative, which I love the most. So that's weeks 8 through 13, and basically we're talking about stories and how stories evolve and what our stories how they can um, help us to communicate about ourselves, about our ideology, etc. So the assignment is a group project, and within this project, it can be graphic novel. I have several people working on graphic novels right now. It could be a film, either a feature film length of 120 minutes or a short. Um, also, animation is included. It could be a game um, or a photo exhibit. There's a wide variety of choices that they can choose from, but it's quite an extensive project. So if we do, let's take a film for example. What they actually have to produce at the end is they have to give us a script with believable language in terms of the dialogue, which is quite hard, teaching the concept of like showing and telling, right? They also have to produce a character bible which is basically like a psychological review of a character and it informs why someone would do what they did and the choices that they make within the storyboard, which is the overview with images of what their film is about. And um, the psychology also obviously informs the script itself and the way that they <coughs> express themselves. So when we're creating that, we're looking at all of those elements
elements together uh, and individually. So they have four weeks, about four weeks to work on that. Um, if, Allison, if you will pass out the handout there, Colin, JJ, can you pass yours forward? Colin, can you pass yours to Charlie? One each. Yes, one each. So I have for you just an example of the course outline because it's, as I explained, it's an extensive course. There's a lot of assessments. Um, <laughs>
So learning a lot of this was, um, it was intense. <laughs> so we did cut some of the theoretical material, also because these students are going to be first year students in the future, and they may not also know some of the theoretical concepts. So we're keeping it to like the basic information and um, adding more language, and we also added the glossary. We thought that was important to have a record of. Okay, so if there is time, I'm going to sample activity, but I'd rather see if you have any questions or comments. Yes? Uh, it seems like there must be a lot of, sort of hard negotiating going on in terms of uh, deciding on group projects. Because I would imagine they all have their own ideas. Do you, do you guide that? Or is it sort of a hands-off uh, event? I mean, you can guide that depending on how, I mean, it depends on how you want to run your specific classroom. We leave that up to the different teachers. Um, I think that the first thing that they turn in is a proposal. And the proposal is supposed to be a persuasive piece, and they've done most of the hashing out Those of ideas individual? at the proposal. Yeah, no, they're group. Oh, that's this group. is also that's part of it. This is the first stage in the final project, the group proposal. And um, there, I mean, there is some hashing out of ideas, but that's what it means to be in a group. And so I kind of, if I guide, I feel like if I guide them too much, they may not have anything to say in reflection. <laughs> because the reflection is specifically about the group project. Um, of course, I think that both Allison and I, because I've observed her classes, we go around as they're discussing and ask. You know, it's your typical like monitoring activity as a teacher when there's a group work, right? So I think for the most part, you could probably structure some activities, but that's not necessary. I think it probably mirrors real life. So, yeah. So in the messy. yeah, so it's kind of messy. And some of the best ideas come from the mess. Yeah. Gotta let them make it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they work. Somewhat groups work differently. So some of them might all clump together because they all think they're experts in animation. Actually, they often are experts in animation. Yeah. And yet another group will have one person who's good at animation and one person who's who's done a video game, and they'll work use their skills together. So it's quite interesting at the end when they do the reflection, so they, they consider, so was it good that we're all experts in one field? If so, why? Or was it good that this group, no, we all brought different strengths? So they consider that when they do the reflection at the end. It's about uh, yeah. language features. Yeah, the students learn some uh, language features about, uh, I mean, some language features about typical in the creative video writing. Absolutely. So what um, I think our major focus is on the final project. So for those who are going into movie making, this is great for them because they learn about how to write the script and the specific language that goes into a script. But for everyone, they're learning about the reviews. So the structure of writing the review, <coughs> what are some of the language that you use, how do you move from one section to another, what, are, uh, what do all the sections contain? Same for the biography, because a self-biography has very specific language that you use. Um, and so there, for each section, there are definitely different language features that are specific to creative media, but also that they could use in other ways as well, like the biography. Did that answer? Yeah, apart from seeing the examples in the writings, and the drilling or what? How, how do you train students to, to, to learn those features? Any grammar exercises or how do you train them to use those features? Well, I think, I know that Allison has created some grammar exercises. Yeah. Um, what I tend to do is we read the examples, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have examples of the bios and we go through it for what are the type, is it formal, informal? What are the words that you're seeing? Um, they're, they're all, I think, like somebody else has mentioned, they've all got different levels when yeah. they come in of English, so it would be difficult mm -hmm. to have a specific activity on, I don't know what's passive voice, for example, because some of them know it 
perfectly and others know a bit. So um, I tend to just give them feedback on, on exactly. their um, writing. And the, the assignments are spread throughout the semester. So they get feedback fairly early on in week three, I think. Yeah. So, so they get individual feedback on their grammar. And then, then I'm sure many teachers do this to collect the error, common errors that yes. you found and then do an activity on the common errors in the whole class. Exactly. That, and that's generally how we do that. But it's difficult to judge how to tackle that. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. And also, I, we have some great examples of artists, like local artists like Samson Young, who is a sound artist, who is incredible. And um, some of the interviews that he's done in order to talk about his own work. So mm -hmm. highlighting how do you answer a question about mm -hmm. your work? How do you frame it so that an audience who is, in, they get to pick their audience. I guess I should also talk about that. But anyway, how do you frame it so that the audience, your proposed audience, will really be able to understand what you're talking about? Um, and that is something that we do work with them on. Every single assignment has to, they have to identify what is the purpose and who is the audience. Yeah, that's fine and I'm done. Thanks. <laughs>